I adore Game of Thrones. Most people do. Whether you're inclined to the television program or the novels themselves, Martin is clearly a master of his craft. And in every sense, the closest thing we've seen to Tolkien in years, whether that's for good or for ill. Despite several Premio Ignotus Awards, the Bram Stoker Award for Long Fiction, and his sensational novella, The Skin Trade, arguably one of the best short fiction pieces ever penned, Martin has a problem. Entitled readers and television lovers everywhere are demanding Martin complete his work, and the man has received much ire for doing anything other than writing. His appearance on a US evening talk show sparked thousands of abusive tweets and anger, panning Martin for not doing something other than writing. As we all know, writing takes time, both at and away from the desk. But Martin seems to know this, and a glance at his personal blog reveals an astonishing confidence and resolve to shoulder the criticism he receives. Reflecting on his work reveals a common thread. Many of his characters die. This is inevitable in the high fantasy genre, of course, but some of these deaths are truly heartbreaking. We follow characters for years, only to have them slain in a horrific, unfortunate, and sometimes even humiliating ways. We've spoken before of the same problem, which appears in The Phantom Menace with the death of Darth Maul, and in Assassin's Creed Unity with the fall of Elise. Killing characters can sometimes kill character. Martin's world is immense. It's well conceived and more mapped out than some real cities. Westeros is stunningly realized in both the books and on screen, and locations have as much attitude as the people who dwell within them. And ultimately, it's Martin's characters who pump the blood and life into his world. The arrogant and single-minded Arya, the survivor Sansa Stark, and the problematic Queen Daenerys. These characters and all the faces Martin brings to us will stay with us forever. Or so we think. And then they fall, we mourn, and then, eventually, we forget. Some constraints remain, of course, but when you turn to the graveyard of Westeros, there are faces you won't recognize, voices you'd forgotten. The real question, when Martin's writing is concerned, regards consequences. Jim C. Hines concludes that choices and actions in a story have consequences. Is death an appropriate consequence for a character's action? And he then goes on to realize that death should only exist if it makes the story better. I would argue this is intrinsically true of all the deaths in Martin's Westeros, despite many people claiming otherwise. We might not remember the name of the Fallen three books later, or during the next season, but at the time, we care. The demise of a man in ceremonious battle or the proud father making the only sacrifice he can. These deaths mean something to us when they happen. Whether or not you believe Martin should be writing for you, and regardless of your dislike for the television program's adaptation, if a character is laid to rest and you feel something, Martin has succeeded. The death was worthwhile. In Martin's own words, the deaths in my works aren't random for shock purpose. They all have clear purpose within the drama of the story, and are only dealt out when absolutely necessary. Martin doesn't cheat by killing characters. Rather, we cheat him by not recognizing our outrage for what it really is. We're angry because we care. Thanks for watching as always guys. This one was particularly fun for me to uh, put together because I really do enjoy looking at Game of Thrones. Uh, and as always, thanks to the Patreons uh, who support us and help make all of this content. And I'll see you next time.